Hi, I'm Dr. Kim. Many askers and uh, students have been asking me how to plot an uh, itching divination. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to plot an itching divination here. Okay, uh, first thing first, okay, you go to drkim.com. Okay, then you go to learn free. Then you look f uh, under category, right? You look for itching. Okay, so uh, after that, you look for this one, how to plot an itching divination, the post. Okay, so in this post, right, it will show you step-by-step -step guide how to plot an itching. Okay. So uh, next, uh, what is uh, I Ching? Okay, so I Ching is an ancient Chinese classical philosophy. Okay, so uh, it's it's hundred uh, percent knowledge based. Okay, it has nothing to do with religion. Okay, so it's not religion. It's a uh, ancient Chi cla classic Chinese classic. Okay, so uh, it's also known as uh, I, I Ching. It has a few spelling. Okay, uh, and uh, some call it the uh, Zhou Yi. Okay, or you may come across words like a uh, book of changes. Okay. Now, uh, if you look at this word yi, jing, right, it comes from the word yi, right? Yi in Chinese means rong yi, means what? Easy, right? Easy for what? Easy for changes, right? So, for example, like rong yi, what? Uh, right, uh, we know that mood changes, people change, uh, and then season change. Um, yeah, even eras change, right? Uh, so, yi um, means change. Okay, so it's called book of changes. Now, we know that nothing is permanent. The only permanent is change, okay? So, uh, I Ching is evolved from uh, Fu Yi. Okay, Fu Yi is uh, he's a disciple of uh, Gu Ruzi, right? He's the one who uh, this uh, he's the one who came uh, came up with this Ba Gua. Okay, so um, uh, when Zhou Wen Wang right was captured, he was in prison, right? So in the prison, he uh, he permutates okay Ba Gua into sixty four hexagram. Okay, we call Liu Shi Si Gua. And then later on, Confucius, which is Kongzi, right? He, he spread this teaching. So that's how you and me got, uh, got to know I Ching, right? Through, uh, yeah, through this process. Okay, so how is uh, I Ching formulated? Okay, so the concept of I Ching, right? So the concept of I Ching, it all starts with the theory of yin and yang. Okay, and this yin and yang talks about balance. Okay, balance. Right, so... um. Uh, it permutates into Pakwa and from Pakwa permutates into 64 hexagram. Okay, so now let's have a look at this chart. Okay, you can see, uh, right, it all starts from this uh, symbol. Okay, this symbol is called Tai Ji. Tai Ji Sen Liang Yi. Okay, Liang Yi Sen Si Xiang. Si Xiang Sen Ba Gua. Okay, so what does this mean? If you look at this, okay, Tai Ji, you will see that. Uh, is uh, like a uh, this black part is called the yin. Okay, so this white part is called the yang. Okay, so the yin you can see there's uh, some some little part of like yang in it, and for the yang you can see some little part of yin in it. Okay, so this one basically is trying to say that um, every good thing there's some probably there's something bad about it, right? Uh, every bad thing probably there's some good thing about it, right? Just like in psychology, right? It's always two sided. Right, nothing is like hundred percent right, hundred percent wrong, right? Or hundred percent good, hundred percent bad. Okay, so it's always two sided to a coin. Okay, so uh, from Tai Chi, right, it sends Liang Yi, right? So it's split into Yin and Yang, and it's represented by this symbol. Okay, so Yang is represented by a straight line, and Yin is represented by two dashes. Okay, two dash. Okay, so. Uh, and from yin and yang, right, we can further, okay, explode this, expand this, right, into, right, yin and yang, you can see they can have a combination, right, we can have all these four permutation, right, those who buy 4D will know what is permutation, right, so from four digit, you can permutate the number, right, same, okay, so yin and yang can be permutated also, okay, so this is the si xiang. Right, the four situation, the four type of event. Okay, so uh, you can see this is the yang, right? This one we call the lao yang. Okay, the the older yang. Okay, so you can see the big part of yang is here. Okay, and this one is the sao yin. You can see the small part of the yin is here. Okay, this is the small yin. Then same for the yin. You can see the big part of yin is here. We call the lao yin, not the eagle, uh, not the lao yin. No, no. The lao yin means the older or the bigger part of the ink, okay, is here. 
right? And then you can see a small part of the yang is here. Okay, so this one, if you like, for me, somehow when I explain this, I will use uh, the synergy of the sun, S U N, the sun, right? Uh, so, uh, or the weather of the day, right? Uh, the daylight and the night. Okay, so what happened is uh, before the sun rise, okay, you can see the south in, right? It's, the dark is getting slowly going to be what bright, right? Because the sun is coming up from the east, right? But that timing, the sun is weak, right? The sunlight is still weak. Okay, it's only until afternoon you can see the sun is very strong, it's very bright. Okay, that one we will call it the lao yang. Okay, then slowly when it comes to evening, you can see, right? The sun here, the yang here, you see, is setting down, right? The yin is coming in, right? So when the yin is fully in, okay, you can see the moon, which is dark full darkness okay so it's in darkness so sometimes um, they use uh, the yang here to represent the sun and this complete ying eh, to represent the moon okay so tai ji sheng liang yi liang yi sheng si xiang right si xiang sheng ba gua ba gua you can see uh, now it's no more two lines right it becomes three lines okay so we call this tri group tri t r i tri group Okay, so this is the eight triangle group. Now, some of you have seen this before. Okay, this is called a ba gua, the eight triangle group. Okay, so uh, uh, it's represented by three lines. Okay, three type of what kind of lines? Yin and yang lines. Okay, so sometimes uh, this all this symbol right can be represented by like the family members. Okay, also can be represented by the directions like north, south, east, west, north, north, east, south, east, north, uh, north, west, south, west. Okay. Or, uh, and you can see some Feng Shui master they use this right uh, to to um, decipher the Feng Shui of your house and things like that. Okay, uh, okay. So uh, from Pa Gua, right, it permutates into sixty four hexagram. Okay, we call it Si Gua. Okay, so Liu Si Si Gua, you can see it's uh it becomes like what from three lines it becomes what six lines. Okay, and six lines it ex expanded into sixty four formation. Okay, formation. Now, so every formation has an interpretation. Okay, it has like a meaning. Okay, what does this chart mean and so on. Okay, so this is the theory of, uh, the concept and theory of I Ching. So what is it used for? Right, it's used for making prediction. If you want to know, let's say, the story of the person, the person's fate, okay, the destiny of the person, then I Ching is not... Uh, not the correct tool okay so uh, the correct tool to, to do that is like maybe you use a uh, batsu or maybe you use numerology to do that okay uh, so but this this eating is good if you use it for let's say um uh, for example make a prediction like for example uh, maybe about a job right should i take up this offer right so what happened if you take up this offer uh, then for this kind of question you can make use of eating to help you, okay? Because the 64 hexagram will tell you what is going to happen if you do this, okay? So, but eating is not uh, possible to make prediction for like maybe if it's too long, like maybe 5, 10 years or the next life, we don't know what, that's too far away, okay? So usually we use eating for for uh, current situation, usually or for near future, okay? I think that's near future. So how accurate is eating, right? The accuracy is almost 95%. Okay, but of course, depends who is reading it and how you're reading it, right? Okay, so next, um, I want to talk about all this very important. Okay, so before you know how to plot eating, you must have all this concept correct. Okay, so number one, do not plot eating between 11 p.m. at night, okay, until 1 a.m. in the morning. Why? Because this period, according to the ancient Chinese book, uh, the, the accuracy is not, 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 not that good. Okay, it's like less, less accurate. But according to me, it's because 11 to 1, if you plot, you'll be like maybe calling me, right? So, yeah, so I may be sleeping, right? So, yeah, so it's good. So after 1, after 1, maybe you're too tired, right? You fall asleep. Then tomorrow, then you call me or SMS me, right? Okay, so remember, eating is a classical Chinese, classical Chinese philosophy, okay? It's 100% knowledge-based. It has nothing to do with religion. Okay, it's not religion. 
times. Okay, so uh, of course when you plot the aging, you will you need, need need tools, right? So the tools that you need is like uh, like like this tortoise shell. Okay, and in, in this tortoise shell, right, you will see uh, you will have three coins, three three ancient coins. Okay, three ancient coins. Okay, and um, um, in the uh, in the ancient coin, you will see things like uh, you know the wordings. Yeah, and then you will see this part, right? The non wordings. Okay, so the wording you will see the wordings, wordings. Okay, so wordings means the head of the coin. Okay, the coin will have head and tail. Okay, so the head of the coin is the one with the wording. Wording go into our head, right? So that's why wording means head of the coin. Okay, so um, yeah, so uh, where to get this? Where to get this? Okay, so you may need this. So where to get this? Okay, you can get this. Uh, go to my website, right? You can click shop. Okay, under shop, you can look for tortoise shell. Okay, you can look for copper tortoise shell. Okay, so you can order the tortoise shell from there. Okay. Now, um, remember the hexagram has six lines. That's why it's called hexa, right? Hexa means six, six lines. Okay. So uh, that means you have to toss this six times. Okay, you have to toss this six times. So the first toss always start from the bottom line. Okay, bottom up. Okay, like you drink beer, right? Bottoms up. Okay, so bottom, and then you plot upwards. Okay. So only one question per divination. Remember, this one very important. Okay, one question, one divination. Okay, why? Because we will not get an answer, right? How can you have so many questions in one divination? It's, it's doesn't make sense, right? And also, you affect the accuracy of the prediction. So what do I mean by so many questions in one question, right? This is an example. Right? Should I stay or should I go? Should I stay or should I go? Should I stay is one question. Should I go is the second question, right? So there are two questions in one question. So this is, if you if you ask your question this way, you will not get an answer. Okay, so a uh, better way to formulate your question is like, uh, I, I always tell my students, okay, or my asker, be specific about your question. What do I mean by specific? Specific means like, for example, right, you see, should I stay or should I go, right? So instead of should I stay or should I go, Right, you should ask, should I stay married now? Right, or what happened? What happened if not should I even? Okay, uh, should I is also not uh, relevant for eating. Okay, eating answer question like what will happen if we do this, do that. Okay, so uh, we should ask questions like what will happen if I stay married? Okay, so if you ask should I stay? Should I stay what? Stay in a hotel? Stay in the office? Right, stay in the marriage? Or what? So you have to be specific, right? Stay in a in should I stay married now? Or what happened? Right? Always ask what happened if I do this. Okay? What happened if I do this? Should be the question. Okay? So remember the same question can only be plotted once. Okay? So if you want to plot again, you do so after 30 days. Okay? Because we know right changes. Life, there's always changes, okay? So, maybe one year later, two years, three years later, you may say, hey, I plot this before, no? uh, which is like one year ago. It says that, you know, I will be like that. I'll be like good or bad or something like that. But one year later, two years later, or five years later, then you say, hey, it's not the same anymore. Of course, because eating is about changes, right? So, um, yeah, so things things doesn't stay the, the same all the time, right? So, um circumstances change people change and things like that okay so uh, like for me when i plot my car cryptocurrency you know i'm i'm doing a cryptocurrency business right so every month i will plot my cryptocurrency and and every month of course i get good results right and i get better and better answers uh, okay so uh, i plot once a month okay the same question i plot once a month so okay so now we're going to go into how to plot and eating divination okay so first thing first we need to focus on the question we need to be serious we need to be sincere okay so we focus 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 now recommended to focus on the question in front of our prayers okay now this is recommended it's not compulsory but it's recommended okay like i have a like i have a malay asker right so she will face the west okay she's muslim right so she will face the west and she will sincerely seriously right ask specific question okay 
and then yeah, then she toss the coin. Okay, so uh, I even have like Christians and Amor ask us also, right? And students, okay, so when they uh, plot this chart, they can uh, like in front of Mother Mary or, or whatever, lah, okay, if they're Buddha or what, then they just uh, um, express their concern, right? In front of their prayer, okay, so but this is recommended. So let's say you have no religion, yeah, so you want to plot, so no religion, how? Then it's okay, you find a quiet place, okay. Or you travel and then there's no prayer in front, so it's okay. It's find a quiet place where you can focus and then you ask. Okay. Now step two. Step two, you need need this. Okay, you need the tortoise. You need to take three coins. Okay, so you need to put the three coins right into the tortoise shell. Okay, then you toss. Okay, so you toss. <coughs> now every toss you need to do recording. Okay, so make sure you have a like paper beside you or something like that. So you record the sign. So whatever you toss, okay, hit until hit until or whatever you just you record it. Okay, you record it, and you continuously do this for six times because hexagram has six lines, right? So you plot from the bottom up. Okay. <coughs> now, uh, when you <coughs> when you plot, right, you will see. Uh, you may plot things like the X and the O. Okay, let me illustrate in a diagram where is the X and the O. <coughs> okay, so when you plot X and O, you have to reverse it. Okay, I illustrate it in a diagram. <coughs> okay, um, okay, in this diagram, right, you see three tails, three heads. These are the possibility when we toss the coins, the three coins. Okay, we may get three heads, we may get three tails, two head, one tail, one head, two tails. Okay, so in I Ching, right, the heads are the yang, the tails are the yin. Okay, so a uh, yang is uh, represented by the number three. Yin is represented by the number two, like even number and odd number. Okay, so uh, three tails means two plus two plus two, right? There are three tails. One tail is two, ma. So three tails, isn't it? Two plus two plus two, so equal six. Okay, three heads means three plus three plus three, right? So because one three, one head is three, three. Two head is six, right? Three head is nine. So three six nine right? So this is six this is nine. Okay, so two head means what? Two head means three plus three right? And then tail means what? Two right? So six plus two is eight lah. Okay, and then one head two tail. One head means three. Two tail means two plus two, right? So four plus three we have seven. Okay, so uh, look at the lines of the representation. Okay, so one head two tails is represented by a yang. Two head one tail is represented by ink. Okay, so three heads and three tails is represented by the yang with a circle and the yin with the cross. Okay, so if you get three heads or three tails, right, you need to draw this circle and the x. Okay, and then you need to, this is called changing line. Okay, you need to reverse it. If this is yang, you need to reverse it to yin. If this is yin, you need to reverse it to yang. What about the rest with no uh, circle and no cross? Okay, then you just leave it alone. Okay, like this one. <coughs> right, one head, two tails. Ah, you just leave it alone. You just bring, carry forward. Okay, if it's dash, you just carry forward. Okay, but if it's a circle or X, then you have to implement changing line theory. Okay, you have to implement changing lines. Okay, so, um, okay, for some uh, eating masters, right, uh, they, will, they will say, oh, this is relevant and this is relevant. Okay, this one, explain your current situation and this one right will explain the future situation or your prediction okay for me i will go straight to the changing hexagram okay uh, yeah i will not go into this so assuming that there's no zero no circle and no cross okay let's say they're all one head two tail two tail one head one head two tail all the way from bottom first toss until the last toss right then it's okay then that is your prediction okay this is only applicable if there is um, there is changing lines. Okay, so after we plot, we look at this one. Okay, we look for this one. What we do is we will we will look for this hexagram. Okay, what is the representation of this hexagram? Okay, this one the below three right. This is called the xia gua. This three we call the sang gua. Okay, so the xia gua is qian gua right. Uh, so look at the sang gua. So what we do? We go up. Right, we look for the chart. 
So we can see what number 11 is the chart. Okay, then what we do, we we go to hexagram 11. Okay, you can go to again learn free, right, and you look for hexagram 11. Okay, if not, you can search hexagram 11. Okay, so in the post, in my post, okay, there are brief explanation, okay, of the hexagram. Okay, and they are explained in line 1, line 2, line 3, line 4, line 5, and line 6. Okay, now do not choose the line you think you like it. Look auspicious, that is the prediction. No. Okay, all the six lines are the prediction. Okay, they are the prediction. <coughs> okay, so here means, right, this one means what? Heaven, right, earth. This one is the human, right? So this is the future. This is the past. This is the present. Okay, 天地, run her. Okay, that's what it means. Okay, 天地, run her. <coughs> okay, so um, yeah, then after that, you can look for hexagram 11, okay, in the post. Alright, I'll be uploading more videos explaining the hexagram okay, later on. Okay, so later on you can also look for the video for a more detailed interpretation, right? Or you can look at the brief post, okay? Briefly, you have an understanding what is your prediction about. Alternatively, you can contact me, okay, for an interpretation face-to-face -face session. Of course, I charge, right? Okay, so um, that's about uh, how I plot uh, teaching, okay? So uh, I hope you learned something from me today. Thank you.